Hello everyone, welcome to MJ Hobby Corner. Uh, this is MJ uh, Spotlight, Game Spotlight. And this is a little series that I, I have that I put up periodically on the channel. And uh, it's designed to talk about a, a particular game that I have in my library, a random game. And uh, talk about it a little bit. It's a chance to geek out a little bit and talk about the rules and give a basic overview of the game. So that's for those of you that are new to the channel that might not have seen this uh, kind of video before. Uh, but for the rest of you, welcome. And uh, today I have uh, Ivan Sorensen's Five Leagues from the Borderlands. And that is today's uh, game spotlight. Now, uh, Ivan Sorensen is one of my favorite authors, uh, including Joseph McAuliffe. Both authors uh, I really favor a lot. And uh, uh, Ivan Sorensen, for those of you that might not know, is also the author of Five Parsecs from Home. So, uh, yeah, it's a great system. Um, Five Leagues from the Borderland uses the same core techniques that uh, Five Parsecs does. All right, There are some differences and of course this game is uh, a fantasy game uh, unlike Five Parsecs which is futuristic you know sci-fi. So uh, all right without further ado let's get into talking about the book. Now this is going to be about the digital uh, copy of the book. You can purchase that book on War Games Vault. Um, I will have a link in the description uh, where you can get it. Now uh, is this is a game uh, like Five Par Six that is uh, for solo play. Uh, it is miniature agnostic, so there is no miniatures line associated with it. Uh, you can use basically whatever miniatures you have. Now. Um, the setting is a, a, fa a dark fantasy setting, right? And uh, one of the things I like is that when you look at the book, you see all these little black and white pictures, and uh, it, it and all they are are pictures of like uh, forests or things like that, and it gives the atmosphere a, a bit of a, a mysterious nature, and I, I like that. I like the way the author did that with the book. So that's a little cosmetic thing about the book. Okay. Um, the book is about 169 pages um, and we're going to start with the rules. So the turn phases in uh, Five Leagues from the Borderland include uh, quick actions, normal actions, slow actions, just like in Five Par Six, but there's also a monster actions phase okay so monsters in the game considered things like undead are considered monsters um, you know and anything like a dragon you know uh, anything like that anything animal like um, and then uh, no enemies uh, say human enemies or bandits or whatever the case you may be facing they uh, their turn is in the normal actions now the mechanic here is that you're using agility score and uh, if it's dice are compared to the highest agility, then assigned to the characters where roles match or are lower than the character's agility stat. And so those roles determine what phase they will act in, whether they will act in the quick phase or the slow phase. So again, uh, very similar to five parsecs. And that is the core mechanic of the game. Now, um, the monsters, of course, react in the monster phase. There are good examples throughout the book of these different things. Uh, that's one thing I really like about uh, uh, the author's books is that uh, they are very organized, uh, very a uh, very good uh, uh, reading, you know, and that's important when you're trying to learn rules. So um, you have other things. The book uh, includes in the rules uh, extra activities like opening doors. You know, that kind of stuff costs you an inch of movement. Um, climbing windows, which costs two inches. So you can actually have terrain with open windows and have your characters climb in. That's really cool. I, I love when games do that. Uh, there are dash actions, uh, just like in its uh, cousin game, you know, 5 par 6. Um, 
all figures should remain within an inch of each other, uh, uh, you know, in sort of a cohesion uh, type of thing. Uh, and that's for fighting. Okay. So figures, uh, that actually what it is, is uh, figures that move within an inch of each other force a combat, you know, so they, they will begin to fight uh, even an inch away from each other. So that's what that, what I meant with that. Uh, figures can move up or down terrain uh, as normal. Uh, lots of movement examples throughout the book. Uh, there is then a terrain table, uh, which is interesting. Um, and that is dedicated to line of sight and how it affects terrain. So uh, it, uh, a lot of this section of the, of the book covers terrain and how it affects line of sight. So that's very important. Uh, there is a non-combat actions table, which will summarize everything I just said about the different uh, actions that do not pertain to combat. The tables are very clear and concise, no problem there, uh, really. It's a well-written book. So then we're going to jump into combat, and combat uh, the rules for combat start around page 30 of the book. Um, one of the primary rules, you cannot dash prior um, to a combat action, uh, it requires an action, right? A combat action, that makes sense. Um, and of course, there's missile combat and melee combat. Uh, there's also magic in this game. It's more subtle than in other fantasy games, but it exists. Um, so the combat mechanic uh, deals with opposed roles, okay? In a series of three exchanges, and that's interesting. Uh, there's a little diagram there that shows the different exchanges, what that means. Uh, and of course, you add any bonuses or anything that pertain to the combat. So basically, these exchanges are uh, three opposed roles that the player will make. Um, and so uh, those exchanges, uh, for example, uh, could be, you know, the attacker winning, uh, a draw, between both attacker and defender, the defender winning, right? So those are the three kind of outcomes for these exchanges. And then they repeat itself. Uh, you do that, that's the first exchange. And then you go back and you do that again, you know. Uh, so it, it's very interesting. Um, and until you get to the three exchanges, right? Uh, and by then, uh, you know, uh, the combat should resolve itself out. So the rest of the chapter covers injuries and other situations that may arise, not uh, either through combat or other uh, actions. Now, using will, uh, there is a will stat which is important, and of course, that will is associated with morale. It's also associated with problem solving, and it lists a few problems um, for scenario-driven games. So that that's interesting how will is used as a stat uh, in the game. Uh, there are unusual situations like crashing into things, you know. That would be something I would do. Um, now on page 46 of the rule book, you get a game turn reference, which is of course very helpful. Print that out and you have all the sequence of events that take place uh, in a game turn, in, you know, including combat and all that stuff. So. Uh, on page 53, we see an equipment table with weapons, and weapons are broadly categorized, um, but you have enough detail that you can really, uh, you know, customize your figures or choose your figures according to the weapons that they have. It's, it's very good. Um, now, character creation starts on page 59, so it, the book deals with all the rules, the combat rules, all those things. And by the way, you do get uh, missile combat here. Uh, crossbows shoot at a range of uh, 18 inches and longbows at a range of 24 inches. So you do get missile weapons. Um, so anyone who plays five parsecs will be familiar with this. So during character creation, you're going to choose a very important character, uh, which is going to represent you. And that character is called the Avatar. And I, I like that. I, I thought that was interesting. You know, so you have an avatar that represents you. So you're going to choose your coolest mini, your favorite mini to represent you. And then you'll have 
your companions that go with you. So uh, the, in this part of the book, it is explained how you create your characters, how you get your companions, that sort of thing. And then it jumps right into campaigns, okay? And uh, campaigns, um, you set up a region, right? And the book it explains how to set up your campaigns. Uh, there's nothing ambiguous about it. And then you establish villages, places where your characters are going to visit and potentially get supplies or meet other companions that may stay with you for some time. So it, it's a very uh, role-playing game. Uh, it has a system that's very RPG style, right? If you like that kind of narrative RPG game style, it's a great game, you know, just like Five Parsecs. Um, there are three broad regions to play in, and you choose those depending on the threat level. So if you want a harder game or a simpler game, you will choose your regions, right? Um, on page 75, uh, the campaign turn is uh, detailed. You have contracts, you have optional trade tables, you have village events, you know, you have towns, which are an abstract thing in the game. You can model a town if you want to. Uh, you know, and, and especially if you film battle reports, that's probably a cool thing to do, right? And just have a picture of the town with the characters, and then you describe what's going on. Uh, very much like Five Parsecs, you know, you have a campaign turn where all these roles and all these things are going to take place. You're going to be checking tables, and that's what's going to further the story. The encounter is a part of the campaign turn. So the encounter is going to be where you set up the tabletop battle. So, um, okay, so that, that covers that. And then uh, you get to encounters, which is related to um, campaign, right? It's going to show you what enemies uh, are potentially going to be uh, available, right? It's going to show you how they come out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How do you how you use them? How they're deployed? That sort of thing. Um, and there's about 15 pages in this section. It's all like tables and and things like that. And again, it's very concise, very organized, it's very well written. So it's really uh, not a bad read at all. And um, I'm looking forward to really trying this game in the future. So you have battle objectives, uh, that helps your encounters, it gives a, a better goal, um, shows you how to divide your encounter table, so between sections, you know, and terrain placement and all that. Uh, it has a section on rewards, which of course is important in any kind of RPG style adventure game. And that, that's what this game is, more of an, an adventure game. Uh, than anything else. Now there is a lot of fighting of course uh, as you know from Five Parsecs but um, definitely to me uh, it's an adventure game. Um, now uh, you have tables on loot, you have experience points results after you complete an encounter, uh, you have assorted and optional rules which are, are interesting. There's a whole bunch of interesting uh, assortment of optional rules that you can add to the game to give it a little more flavor. Now on page 155 of the book, uh, we get into like vile creatures and monsters, and so it gives you some examples of these monsters along with the stats, right? Um, and so it's a, a bestiary, basically. And then there's a full list of these things, okay? And then um, right at the end of the book, you have the designer notes, right? And uh, it, uh, one thing I love about this author is he does gives you a list of all the upgrades that have happened to this edition of the rules as opposed to other editions. So if you have an older edition, you see exactly what has changed, right? And it helps you understand what the second edition is doing. Uh, I really like that Ivan Sorensen does that. And uh, he gives a good conclusion. Of course, you have your uh, tables and references and things like that that happen at the end of the book. So um, you can purchase that book at War Games Vault. That's where I purchased my copy. Um, 
again and this is uh, my opinion uh, in my opinion only it's not the uh, doesn't reflect the opinion of others but for me uh, five leagues uh, from the borderlands is a very interesting rule set if you're looking for a solo play game uh, a fantasy game I would definitely give this a try uh, this game also has quite a few expansions and so you can get monster packs that upgrade all your monsters uh, you can get like uh, village sets or village encounters right and they're a very cheap very cheap um inexpensive is what i mean very inexpensive uh, expansions uh that you can then add to your game and it, it just complements the rules it makes things a lot spicier a lot interesting more interesting um there is an undead expansion i i bought that and there's an expansion that deals with uh lizardmen so it's like the cold ones, I think, is what it refers the, uh, them to, right? And so uh, I really like that. You know, I love that it does that. Um, you also have a werewolf expansion, if I'm not mistaken, unless I'm confusing it with another game, which is possible. But there are a point is, guys, there's a lot of expansions to this game. And so you can start with the core rules, Five Leagues from the Borderlands, Try it out and then go from there and expand your characters and, and you can add to it, you know, as much as, or as little as you want. So a great, uh, it really, uh, you know, Ivan Sorensen, like Joseph McAuliffe, they just don't disappoint, uh, you know, in my opinion, in our opinion. And I'm not sponsored by anyone, uh, you know, this is just my opinion. So definitely give it a try. If you're into fantasy and RPG play, Definitely, definitely give it a try. And if you know Five Parsecs from Home and you've played it, but you haven't played this uh, fantasy version, you won't be disappointed because, I mean, it's really the same core mechanic, except there are there are rules that are different that obviously fit into that dark fantasy theme that the game portrays, right? So there are differences, but uh, the core mechanic is pretty much the same. So, um, all right, folks, well, that's... All this is a, a short little um, game spotlight on Five Leagues from the Borderland. Now I will be doing future game spotlights on some of those expansions. So if you are interested, come back and you will see uh, more on this game and many other games. Thank you, folks, uh, for supporting the channel, and thank you for uh, for listening. and And I hope that this is helpful in some way. And uh, you know, let me know uh, if you've played Five Leagues from the Borderland. Let me know what you think of the game and uh, anything else. You can leave it in the comments. It'll be interesting to know. Have a good one, guys.